Hey guys, Marcus Crawford here. Hey, uh, I'm going to interrupt this introduction to the uh, Femi A3 for some uh, observations that I made while doing the test. And I wasn't able to see them when I did uh, the introduction and the conclusion that you'll see in this video. Uh, but in looking at the video I took with it, uh, it is unacceptable. Uh, what happens is the drone, as it rises in altitude, the lens begins to fog, and so it's like literally looking through the fog. And uh, evidently, it's a common problem with a range of A3s made between a certain point and another point. And there's a lot of people talking about it. If you look on different uh, search on YouTube, you'll find a few videos about it. There's there's even a guy that that uh, says he has the authorized solution, which is you, you pull the, you, you heat the, the lens cap up, uh, cover up with a, a hair dryer, and you very carefully pull it off, and then he puts glue around the lens and lets it cure for 24 hours, and then puts the cap, yeah, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Uh, I, uh, I, I, with my luck, I put one blob of glue right over the top of the, of the whole lens, so, uh, what I'm going to do, I believe, is uh, I'm going to uh, uh, return this guy to uh, Banggood for a refund. I, I sent him an email. You know how they do, <laughs> get old Banggood. They ask you to, to send pictures, etc. So I did. Then they sent me an email back. Well, now they want a video. Then they wanted pictures of the serial number on the box. And, you know, we've all been through that before. It's It's very different than trying to return something on Amazon or, or a normal uh, uh, online retailer. Uh, so we'll see what they come up with. Uh, I won't mess around too much. If they start giving me a big runaround, uh, I'll probably just go to my uh, credit card company and do a chargeback. But uh, it's unfortunate because I really had high hopes for the drone. Uh, you know, if... if there's some problems with it with regard to uh, the FPV screen being difficult to see and I talk about that uh, on this uh, on this video uh, but those are things that you know it's a $229 drone and it kind of works so you could work around it but if the video that you get off the product it is after all a camera drone with a uh, stabilizer on there a gimbal and if, if the video that you get off the drone doesn't work, well, I mean, then really the whole drone doesn't work. And it's too bad because it's a pretty nice flying drone. Uh, and it looks to be, you know, a, a fairly well-built drone. It looks pretty stout. Uh, but, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, that's not something that they're going to cure with, uh, with firmware or anything like that. So, you know, if they come up with some kind of scheme where they say they'll send me another one or something hey great you know but I if not I what my intention is just to uh, return it and uh, you know I, I, I can't recommend it at this point because uh, I know there's some good ones out there there's some guys that have some decent video but how do you know if you're gonna get one of this group uh, that the lens fogs up on and and uh, quite frankly that just doesn't work and even at the two hundred and twenty nine dollars that I paid for it which I thought was a great deal uh, it's just not worth that. So anyway, on with the video. Hey drone seekers and drone enthusiasts everywhere. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, uh, we got, as promised, got the uh, Femi A3 out today. Uh, I, I need to tell you, I actually did a first flight with this thing uh, earlier, but I had a problem with the SD card. It was a bad SD card. Uh, so uh, I wasn't able to show you that footage, uh, but we want to get this thing up in the air today And we already did an introduction. So, uh, you know, I won't go over all of that stuff uh, I'm over here at heroes park in Meridian and I'm kind of uh, by the picnic shelter because I'm gonna need shade with this FPV screen uh, from my previous experience I was in the shade and I could barely see it then and it's pretty bright out here today. So uh, I'm going to need to be in a shaded area where I can see what's going on and to me what I've seen so far is that is really the one weak point of this particular product. 
although I understand you can use uh, FPV goggles with it, which uh, I have saw some of the other testers doing, so it's probably the way to go. Uh, but in any case, uh, let's quit messing around and let's uh, let's get the thing up in the air and uh, let's let's try it out and see how she flies. Uh, if we have enough battery, we'll uh, maybe try some of the uh, automated flight modes out and so forth. Uh, it's uh, a pretty good flyer, and uh, so uh, should be uh, should be interesting. We won't get too carried away. We won't be trying to do any uh, long distance flights or or anything like that. Uh, but uh, give me a second here. Let me get everything fired up, and we'll put it in the air. The drone is on, and uh, and we've got it. Uh, uh, we've already got FPV. It took just a second, and uh, on the screen, I'm, it's telling me all the uh, data about the drone, the video channel, etc. System check says it's good. So, I already I'm, I'm facing away from it, and I already see a little breakup on the FPV, and it's just a few feet away from me. So, uh, anyway, let's quit messing around here, and uh, let's see if we can get it in the air. It says unable to, so yeah, ready for takeoff now. Finally got the ready for takeoff sign. Uh, and like I said, the, the FPV is breaking up just a little bit. Uh, but, uh, but we'll get it in the air here and uh, see, what we can, uh, see what we can accomplish. But if I go right here and I go into smart flight, which I press in, and then auto takeoff. And let's hit auto takeoff and uh, see what we got. Auto takeoff. Huh, maybe I need to hit it twice. There it went anyway. It says it's got its home point. Let's uh, see if we can start recording. I long press this button. Yeah, and I see the recording counter uh, starting up there. And I'm going to drop the gimbal just a tad. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's get some altitude. And wow, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty quick bird as you can see there. So I wish I could show you all the stats uh, like I can when I'm uh, recording my screen on my iPhone, but you, you can't quite do that. Uh, I, well, I guess there's a way that you can record this screen, but it doesn't give you the same picture as what I see on FPV. And I can tell you, I'm in the shade, and it is really difficult to see. And I already get a little bit of breakup, but uh, let's, uh, let's move forward here. I see an aircraft out there, boy. He's pretty dang low. Uh, he's he's way higher than what I am, but man, I mean, I'm looking at him and I'm going, wow, is that guy above 400 feet? I don't know, but he's off way away from us, so no problem for us. Sticks are pretty sensitive. You know, I'm uh, trying to do a yaw here. Yeah, and I mean it's, you know, I can I can give it a little bit of finesse. And I'm looking at the horizon. It looks pretty good. Might be just, uh, yeah, I don't know. That horizon's pretty darn good. So uh, so let's go straight out this way. And like I said, I'm getting uh, already getting a little bit of breakup on the FPV screen, even at that. And we're pretty clear here. Although you could say, you know, maybe I'm next to this building with a big metal roof I don't know but I gotta tell you if I wasn't uh, under this uh, shade you I wouldn't be able to see anything on this screen yeah and there I just boy I really lost FPV there and I'm pointed right at the drone yeah that's that's an issue you need to be able to see what you're doing with the drone uh, so, uh, so I'm going to try a return to home, and that, there again, that's in smart flight. So we're going to go. I thought you press down on the button to execute. Yeah, there we go. So I'm still learning the drone. I, th I think you press it and it gives me that next screen, and then you press it again. So we'll see here. Yeah, the camera's pointed at the landing pad. We'll see how close it gets. So 
see if I can flip. Yeah, I can drop the gimbal down here a little. There we are down there. You see the picnic shelter. I'm telling you, anytime I get out into the sunshine, like I'm out in the sun and you you just can't, you cannot see this. You just absolutely in the sun cannot see the screen. Pretty good. Looks like it's pretty accurate here. We might mow the grass a little bit. It's coming down slow. Yeah, it's going to miss. I'm going to pick up the camera here. And this drone doesn't make any promise of, uh, of uh, precision landing. So, you know, whatever it does is what it does. Yeah, we mowed a little bit of grass there. We'll pick it up. Okay, so we'll take off again and uh, we'll pick up the gimbal just a little. And maybe we'll try some of those other automated uh, flight modes. Just mess around with it. Uh, it looks like it stopped recording when it landed, which is good. So that's that's what I like. Uh, that way it saves the file. So let's see if we can start it recording again. Yeah, there it did. So it started recording. And you can see, I'm fa of course, I'm facing away from it. But, uh, well, you can't see it, but I can see it. Still even a little breakup with the FPV. So I'm going to go into Smart Flight. And... Uh, Follow me, orbit flight. Yeah, we want auto takeoff. Yeah, so what I was doing before, I was holding down the button. So you hit it once, and then you hit it again, and it will auto take off. So that was the mistake I was making earlier. So there we are. So, uh, so I'm going to shut off the cannon here. Well, let's see. That's the only way you're going to hear my voice. Uh, yeah, so I don't know how we're going to get audio. So we're going to lose uh, audio here, uh, but I'm going to get out there and I'm going to see if I can do a little follow me and then I'll put a narration in back, uh, back in my office. The Femi A3 focuses in on the controller for the follow me function and it works pretty good. Look as I push the drone backwards here as I walk towards it and then as I turn sideways it follows me perfectly and then turning around to go back towards the landing pad there hey it just followed me all the way I think that is a great feature of the Femi A3 okay we've burned up quite a bit of battery did the follow me fine by the way we're gonna try and orbit here real quick uh, while we still got some battery so I'm clicking on uh, orbit flight and fly above the point of interest we're gonna we're gonna say uh, right where it is now is the point of interest well maybe not okay I'm gonna call that the point of interest and then uh, use the pitch roll stick to control the circling radius and direction so I think uh, Let's go up and get some height because we want to make sure we're above everything. And then we're going to click OK. And I'm going to back it up here. And then I'm going to start the circle. Uh, we're going to go clockwise or counterclockwise. I thought that's how I started it. So it's flying back in here. Auto adjust, flight altitude and radius. Please wait. Use pitch roll to set circling distance and speed. So uh, there we go. 
Yeah, so it came back to where I started it at, so. So I could increase, yeah. So I could increase the distance there. Yeah, so I on the fly I was able to increase the radius. So that's pretty cool. So you got to watch the battery on this thing cuz my understanding is is that it does not uh, it doesn't return to home on low battery. It just lands in place. So that's why I'm kind of keeping an eye on that. Uh, yeah, so it, it's not you know, you look at the little I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but you look at that little battery icon up there in the top left. It doesn't tell you a whole heck of a lot. Uh, so anyway, it doesn't give you a percentage or anything like that. So anyway, let's get out of this. So to do that, I know I go into Smart Flight. I had a problem with this the other day. Oh yeah, I got to go into Smart Flight and then I go exit smart flight yes and then the drone is just hovering so that's cool that's exactly what you want it to do so uh, let me bring it down here a little bit and let's uh, let's see if we can get a close-up look at it with the camera Let's see if we're low enough that we can see that. Kind of hard to look at the uh, at the cannon and the and the drone at the same time. This is a pretty sporty little flyer, I'm going to tell you. We're so bringing it in close here, but you can see how stable it is. You know, it's a pretty windy day. So we're kind of, I'm actually under the canopy here a little bit, and it's uh, its doing pretty good. Let's let's rock it a little bit. I was like showing people how that, uh, how that gimbal works. Uh, yeah, we had a gust of wind come up here. Pretty good gust of wind. Now, I'm telling you, that's pretty cool because if that would have happened with the Hubson Zeno, now I had to move it back there. It started moving in towards me, so that was me pulling on the stick to uh, back it off. Uh, but but you, a gust of wind like that would have sent the Hubson Zeno into a tizzy. So so it, it is kind of interesting. And this does not have any of those sensors. Yeah, look at that gust. And you see the drone? It's handling it pretty good. And I, that's that's pretty darn impressive. So uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's do an up and away shot here. We're going to go backwards and up. Yeah, so we're down. Yeah, it says looks like we're we better do a return to home. So all of a sudden it turned red auto landing. No, we want to cancel that. We want it to do a return to home. Wow, I almost just told it to land in place. So here it comes. It's auto returning. And you know how much battery we have left? I I don't know. And uh, how long did we fly there? I don't know. It was, yeah. I mean, you can look at it, the voltage dropping there. I that's the problem with that is you can't. It's really difficult to tell uh, how low that that battery is and when you need to when you need to return to home. But let's drop the camera. It's down to 10.9 volts. I hope that's enough. Low battery. So. Let's uh, let's hope it doesn't just drop from the sky here. <laughs> uh, so so I'm going to officially uh, I'm going to officially call that an issue because if you need to reliably be able to tell how much battery power you got and that that's not it's not the best. Well, let's pick the camera up here so you can see where it's at. It's it's quite a ways off from from home point. I'm just going to go ahead and pick the camera up. 
point it, I, that's me yawing it more back our direction. And it's a long ways off. I'm bringing it in closer myself. Let's see if I can land it on the concrete here. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Yeah, hopefully we yeah we caught that on camera. I didn't want it to land in the grass again, so so I went ahead and uh, landed it on the tarmac. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're out of battery. Uh, flight time, I don't know. You know, I wish I had to set a timer, but uh, but it's not all that much. So so is it that much better than the? Uh, I guess what I'm going to say is it's not that much better uh, than the DJI uh, Spark as far as flight time. Now there are people that say that that. Uh, the charger that comes with it doesn't fully charge the battery. That may be the case. I don't. I don't know. But I'm. But I'm testing it to you the way it comes uh, from Femi. And you know, if you have to buy another charger, that's a whole other uh, argument there. So, uh, in any case, cool little drone. I like the way it flies. Uh, well, before we get into that, let me get things shut down, and 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 we'll go from there. Okie dokie. Here it is, and. Uh, you can see a little green on these uh, props from uh, when we landed it out in the grass out there, uh, but uh, but it, it, it like I said, it has it's a pretty robust little drone. It seems to be built pretty good, so uh, I suspect that uh, if that's the worst thing that ever happens with this drone, we're, we're doing pretty good. Uh, man, really fun to fly. Uh, really smooth controls and and uh, works really well uh, the follow me function worked perfectly uh, it, it just you know it follows the remote and it, it was very very accurate and kept its distance I was able to back it up push it forward so so pretty cool that that is uh, I think pretty useful uh, the uh, the orbit mode worked fine uh, the the only downside i'm going to say there's a couple of negatives for me and i i wish you had a better battery meter because you, you when you look at that little picture of that little battery in the corner is it halfway is it full is it it's really hard to tell so you don't know how far into the battery you are and then all of a sudden it turns red and says low voltage and it's time to come home and the other thing that i've been told about this is it does not do an automatic rth it simply lands in place in a low voltage situation uh, so uh, you know you want you'll what you'll find yourself doing is uh, hitting return to home uh, you're getting you know, you're gonna give yourself a safety buffer and probably do it maybe before the drone uh, actually needs to and so that cuts into flight time a little bit too uh, but you know that's not that big a deal the biggest thing to me is not being able to see that FPV screen uh, when I was in the shade here under the shelter it was fine I could see what was going on and I mean, not exactly fine. It was breaking up some, even not very far away. But you know, this isn't a long distance flyer too, so I can even forgive it for that. But uh, it, it still is, even in the shade, you really have to focus on it to see. It's difficult to see. So the guys that are using goggles are probably smart. That's probably the way to go uh, with this bird. Uh, and uh, then, uh, other than that, uh, you know, I, pretty pretty solid little deal. We'll look at the footage when we get out of it. We get out of it when we get home. 1080p, 30 frames per second. But from what I could see, it looked pretty good. And like I said, I had a bad SD card when I flew it the other day. But I did have little small segments of video that I could look at, and it looked really good. So you know, I don't know how that compares to the uh, to the DJI Spark. I'm I'm not exactly sure, but. Uh, and for 229 bucks, if you're looking for an entry-level GPS camera drone, I think you could probably do some pretty amazing things with this. Particularly if you bought a buy a set of, uh, of goggles, FPV goggles. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty darn good. So I guess that's about it for this one. <laughs> this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out 
And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that uh, bell notification so, bell so you know, get notifications and know when we got a new video coming out. And uh, you know, I always say it, but I really do mean it. I appreciate you taking the time to look at these uh, videos that I make and we'll see you on the next one.